Welcome to the Lodge. You've accessed the Lodge Cast Experience. Warning, warning. Dangerous spoilers ahead. Enjoy. Welcome to a Lodge Power edition of Hot Takes. I'm your Lodge Master with me as always is Brother Bishki. It's magic. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, and in the back we got Brother Lucas. Lead them to the Lodge Guest. And also part of our Dune team, our OG Dune team, we got Lodge Mistress Milster. I'm Woo. so happy to be here. And a new addition to the Worm Squad, who should have been there from the beginning, the resident Dune expert, Brother Justin. Thank you for putting a question mark. On that. <laughs> well, you said you hadn't read the third book yet, so. Oh, I was going to say, did you read the books? Dune Messiah. Yeah, but uh, you've read the first two books. Is that right? I, I'm two point seven five Dune books in. Oh shit! Okay, yeah. so that's expert exclamation mark. Yeah, unnecessary. This is <laughs> half of one book, so. Which, yeah, I, we got to get into that. But be, before we get into anything, dude, before we start riding worms around here, <laughs> we got to talk about Brother Scott this week gave us Venmo cash cha-ching! Cha-ching! And he made it very clear that we were only to spend his hard-earned, honest money on the commemorative Dune Worm Fuck Bucket. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and Bishki's I'm, fist deep in it right now. I'm so glad he did. I'm feeling it. It's very... <laughs> oh, the lid came off. The lid came off! <laughs> My so, hand gets stuck in it. Lodge Mistress, can you explain what... Mm. Can you explain, like, with, with some vi rich visual oh, words... I'm so bad at that. ...what this is? Well, in a way, it looks like an ice cream cone, but like imagine that the top of the ice cream cone, there's like a little bit of a, I'm so bad at this. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing great. Talk it's, about the hole. Well, there's a hole. There's a hole at the top, and then it's got that the, the silicone worm spikes that you kind of have to push through in order to get to the and bottom. It's intimidating at uh, first, isn't it? It feels so good. But then it feels real it good. It really uh, does. Uh, Flip your hand um, in there. But no, it does kind of look like as if an ice cream cone kind of got busted open at the top. And then became super evil. Yeah. And it, if you get the if you get the butter on there, it's like some lubricant. <laughs> oh man, I'm not eating out of this thing at all. <laughs> it's hard to. I don't think anyone's eating out of this. No. But thank yeah. you, Brother Scott, for your generous donation. This now lives within the Lodge family. It yes. is a piece of art. We gotta figure sure. out what it's to do with it now. Iconic. It's kind of like Barbenheimer pop culture, like zeitgeist. It's like, pure zeitgeist. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's like the bucket part is like a tin bucket. Like it's they've quality done, item. like AMC has done a lot of commemorative buckets for films, but I don't think this I don't think like any bucket has come close wow. no. to Not the out, to the outside the bucket thinking <laughs> they, they did here in R and D. So if you want to donate to us and make us buy strange <laughs> shit for us to stick our fists in. We're on Venmo <laughs> at Movie Lodge Cast. Yes. Now Bishki has the bucket again. Mm. <laughs> yes. Yes. Finger licking I'm just good. Gonna, I'm just going to put my hand in throughout. Yeah. Grow up those tendrils. So we went to a little movie called Dune Part 2. Is that what it is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Part 2. And before we talk about it... How do you get the protein as quick as possible into the bloodstream? A little schnapps. From Rotten Tomatoes, Dune Part 2 will explore the mythic journey of Paul Atreides as he unites with Chani and the Freeman while on a warpath of revenge against the conspirators who destroyed his family. Facing a choice between the love of his life and the fate of the unknown, uh, the fate of the known universe, mm. he endeavors to prevent a terrible future only he can foresee, period. Wow. Mm. Okay. Now, 
I guess I'm a big dum dum because I thought this was going to be the end of the meal. Yeah. Why did right. I think this was going to be it? <laughs> that's what right. you told me, and I was like, they got a lot to wrap <laughs> up in See, five that's, minutes. <laughs> I've been spreading the propaganda, the falsehoods, and the lies. <laughs> Justin, yeah. did, you knew. Well, you had to thing. know. I think this is negative Marvel influence, which right. is you need to keep it open to keep people wanting more. Right. So finality is uh, uh, not seen as a positive thing. Because didn't Lynch's Dune kind of end? Like they packed that yeah. whole thing mm -hmm. in. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> for better or for worse. It, it, it ended way abruptly. Right. So this is kind of the opposite direction. But the book kind of does end on a sour note in a way. Right. Because it's it kind of is is the sci-fi equivalent of ending with a trial, oh, where he's shit. just holding court and okay. telling everyone what's what. So that's going to be part, the future. part three. Well, no, I think they're going to skip all that nonsense. Oh, okay, all right. Well, listen, I'm fine with it because it's it's a handsomely mounted production and all that, but it's just tough because I automatically already don't know what act it ever is in these Dune movies because the pacing is so weird. Like I had no clue, even in the first one, like you have to throw the typical arc away pretty much. Yeah. yeah. I think storytelling like this probably does lend itself more to television. No, right. yeah, big, big time. Yeah. I was right. like, damn, this should be like our game of Thrones. Right. But because reasons uh they're forcing it as like a large format experience but it's just like not different enough than part one or something like i just felt even like the ending i was like are you fucking kidding me yeah. are you <laughs> fucking kidding me uh -oh. are you fucking fucking Hot fucking fucking kidding me you're Is gonna it? end it just like part one except this time he gets stabbed a couple times and that's the only like like updating like change you're making to this shit he's heating up he's heating up under oh that desert oh my god side. what a fucking gym and milster was sitting right next to him so she's infected too i hear no, her no 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 I, I i just i i was expecting something different because my expectations from you were that it was going to be a completed tale right so but i, but I did think that it was more it, it would have been better as tv obviously because we could have gotten more of the emotionality of it you know what i mean like right. it mm -hmm. was like so weirdly insular and it was like micro and macro it was right. like all it was like so such a sort of summary overview and then these weird sort of small moments like and i all i did was i wanted more like i really right. enjoyed it right. but like i could have used more of the character dynamics interactions sure. and arcs and stories you know what i mean because pretty much all of it is about is paul the messiah is yeah, he which the is one? kind of is he the boring one? story Wait, to part one, though? I feel like we hit all those beats in part one. Well, well we, got even, we got even like more into the weeds. We're still hitting the it. same emotional beats. Well, like part three one. hours later, we're still like whispering the same shit. He, he was from denying. Part one. He was denying the call, and then he finally accepted it. Part one. <laughs> this is the difference, Lucas. Part one is flashes of Zendaya. That's true. Flashes of Zendaya. Part two. <laughs> is Zendaya in the flesh. Yes, I love it. You oh, get her fully in this movie. Now, Bishki, let's talk about your experience because you went rogue and saw this in a different theater at a different time on a different day than we did. Yeah, but you saw it 70 millimeter. Yes, which was looked immaculate. I went to the Universal City Walk 70 millimeter IMAX. The preeminent yeah, and IMAX opening weekend, and it was quite electric. And um, how thick was the air with nerd anticipation? Oh my god! Like it was just all Dune buckets, and <laughs> <laughs> as far as the eye could see, yeah, and hungry, <laughs> sucking, <laughs> finger licking. And, and so yeah, so I'm not coming out of fresh out of Arrakis like you guys. You've but, had time, but the spice is. I might have had a little different experience with with. I don't know if it's a 70 millimeter film, but the spice uh -oh. got into me in this uh -oh. one. Because <laughs> Bishki famously, infamously, incorrectly was so grouchy about the first one. Yeah, I, I went back and listened to the review. I gave it two bones. Two! I and, thought it was two and a half. No. Two even. Yeah, and I, I preferred Lynch's Dune to well, it. Well, yeah. But, but, but this one now... Um, yeah, it's just more spice, more <laughs> desert, more way more sandworms, way more worms, and way more. But Zendaya. you see one worm, you've seen them all, right? Like to keep cutting back to the worms kind of loses its power. So by the end, you're just kind of like, eh, eh. Uh, the worms are pretty cool. 
I think. I mean, Justin, come on. Worms? I'm into worms. I really <laughs> liked the addition of seeing the young stage of the worm yeah, with right? the water that of life. Cool. That's yeah. pretty excellent stuff right there. Yeah, little worms. Were you guys not wowed by the time the first time Chalamet rode the I loved sand it. worm? I love like, that. That shit. sequence was four bones for me. Like, yeah. yeah. The shot behind him as he was getting up, like, oh yeah, you could just see all the big like dune banks hitting him. That's and great. I, I think two things set the stage for a little bit of a saltier take here. Mm. One, the trailer started 10 minutes late. Oh, shit. Oh, oh, mm. we need to fucking talk. And we then... need to fucking talk about <laughs> this is the fucking pre salad, <laughs> pre movie salad dragon. We got the most anticlimactic oh. sequel I have ever seen in my entire life, which I audibly booed. Okay, so because it sucks. It's not for the record. It's not a sequel. It's B roll that they cut on. out of the original. Hold that they are scraping for like these new spots. Hold on. Talk about another fucking chinsery chew. He's on fire. <laughs> Hold on. Can you guess what we're talking There's about? There's a listener? lot because we need to talk about the thing that happened before the thing. Oh we're yeah, with the about. lights, all the lights on for all the previews. Lucas, right? let me tell the people <laughs> what's going on. Yes, the lights were on. That's a separate matter. It was in the IMAX, the they Burbank made, 16 IMAX. They made a new pre-show. The man with the popcorn who at first spilled it and now just eats it calmly is now not even there. They just have new graphics telling you don't text, don't post. And then there's a Coca-Cola ad. I don't know if we're going to see this Coca-Cola ad every time. No, they'll switch them up. I'm this, sure this they'll switch special. them up. It has a couple kind of sharing a Coke throughout different movie situations, like uh, Fast and Furious on a budget style, and then some deep popping and locking with some Coke. Did you have that, Mishka? Yeah, oh, I think it's going to be normal. We might have to see that every <laughs> single time. Omniscient editorial note. The same Coke ad, in fact, plays before every AMC screening. And then the theater went dark and we knew. Well, almost dark because like the lights were on the entire time. <laughs> People were, were like shouting to turn the house lights turn off. Turn the lights off. Lights were still on, but the theater went darkish. And we knew the new Nicole Kidman AMC ad was going to unfurl before us. I was so excited. Oh, I was so excited. <laughs> and, and Justin was like, this is going to make everything right. <laughs> and then it's the same fucking ad. Shortened. Up until she walks into the theater. She and steps in the puddle. I was like, wait a minute. Wait is this a the minute. same ad? All the same. But she's watching different same movies. Shoot. She's uh, watching different movies. Oh, Avatar, two clips. Yeah. Avatar Way of Water. Instead of and Creed 2, yeah, it's, uh, and Elvis. it's Elvis. Elvis. And, yeah. and instead of, uh, uh, I forget what the other original clip was. Yeah, it's now Avatar yeah. Way of Water. And... Uh, they may have shot a new shot of her turning toward the camera, or this could have been That's something they shot That's fucking B-roll, man. You are so delusional if you think she came it's, out to shoot additional material. Yeah, and she says oh, man. to the camera, That's magic. <laughs> <laughs> That's too close to McDonald's for me. Uh, <laughs> we got had. Adam, CEO Adam Aaron lied to us, straight up. He said they... they I, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I thought he said they shot new commercials, but he was using the word new, new, new... When really he meant yeah. we're just re-editing old, old, old. It feels like when like a horror sequel spends the first 20 minutes to, of its runtime having clips from the last movie, you know, to catch you up. They use the same pieces and just like put in a little bit of uh, paprika at the end. <laughs> Not cool, guys. But, but the lights finally dimmed. Yeah. Thank God. And then it was worm riding time. Now, we're not going to go through all the plot because it's fucking Dune and we've been here all day. But listen, it's so much Dune. It's If you like the first one, it's so much more of that. And if you were kind of <laughs> eh, on the first one, you're going to fucking hate this one <laughs> so bad. Not necessarily. Well, yeah, Bishki is proof. We have some comic relief with Javier Bardem. What do we think of him? He's yeah, good. I liked him hype and shallow. I wish we had subtitles for everybody in the movie. I know. Because I, I didn't hear like... a goddamn thing anyone said, honestly. <laughs> for real. For it, real. It was really odd that the most laughs in the theater were essentially people laughing at a religious guy yeah. <laughs> believing in something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really bizarre. Yeah. What do we think of our boy Chalamet? 
Perfect He's hair. Good. Perfect, Perfect hair. hair. I loved his. I loved on all some the weight. He looked a little stronger this time around. Oh god, I was still thinking he looked so, really thin. So thin. I was still thinking about Wonka. Yeah, he <laughs> couldn't does. help it. I can't quite. After you said dead eyes and Wonka, like I can't. Yeah. Like he. They work better in this. Yeah, but he. But does he have the charisma to like lead nah. like that? Oh hell nah. no! Nah. nah. Like, is is he like? But his. You know, the tire was blowing and, you know, it was looking good. <laughs> and his uh, chemistry with Zendaya is, feels much more sibling-like to me. <laughs> I mean, I, that might just be me. She, their, their romance could have scorched up the screen for other people, but I don't know. I, I didn't quite get that red-hot fire from them. Mm -hmm. They might just be too young. Right. They're mm -hmm. just kids to us. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Yeah. It's like, oh, look at those adorable kids. They're right. going to go make out. You know, in the back of a car at a drive-in movie. <laughs> uh, what do we think of Christopher Walken as the emperor? Man, they put some Vaseline on the lens for some of his shots, <laughs> didn't they? He kind of looked like a kindly grandma to he me. He looked so. a little out to lunch. <laughs> I like, don't know. He didn't know where he was or what he was doing or what he was saying. True. I was like, is this the same Chris Walken from my wild mountain time? <laughs> he's, About he's, the gates. He's my aloof. gates. He's aloof because he's been in power too long. Right, right. And I, was warped I was confused how he's just chilling the whole movie. And then he's like, we're going down to Arrakis to fight him. Like, I'm going myself. And I'm like, really? Like, the and, emperor of the known universe is going down to the death planet where, like, nothing <laughs> survives with all the worms? Like, You're taking who, your daughter? who recommended that? Yeah. And he's like taking his hot fetching daughter. He's like, we need a climax. <laughs> See, but one thing that you can you can really see with this movie is when something has been not only adapted but also right. stripped from yes. parts yes. over the course of oh, decades. Decades. You see people absorbing this material and then thinking, how can we make this more exciting? Right. So really the blame is with George Lucas for taking this and being like, all right, Emperor's just an old ass guy. Fuck yeah. this. I'm Make giving him right. lightning <laughs> powers. Make him a magic grandpa. You know? <laughs> yeah. And so no, you, that's know, a you good have point. things adapted to be more pulpy and more adventure -y than when you get back to the source material. It's just Christopher with, walking in pajamas. Yeah. You're left with what is, you know, hard sci-fi, which people don't really like right. outside of those small, increasingly small circles. Right. And what I don't understand, and I've talked to you about this before, Justin, I'm not a huge sci-fi guy, but I love every second of this shit. So what does that say about me? I don't feel like I'm a hard sci-fi guy, it's, but it's this is style. Great. It's yeah. style, yeah, man. It's like I was, I was watching this, which it seems by the t uh, the tone of the edge that I enjoyed a little more <laughs> than the rest of us, but. You're watching it and it's done with such flair yeah. and such amazing visuals and all this, the the just the vibe that it's putting off. Oh, it's such a vibe. And it's just compared to its peers, it's a fucking uncontested layup. Yeah. It's like no one is even coming close to putting this much art into something like this. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Speaking of art and flair, can someone explain to me why there was like a black and white, low res Yeah, that was interesting. Like, like flashback or something? Like, Was like, that a flashback or was that just the way they were presenting that world? Yeah, that's what I, they were presenting that world. Did, did I miss like a line of dialogue where they're like, he'll fight in the black and white like arena or whatever? Like, I'm sorry, <laughs> yeah, can someone explain that to me? No, I just want to know. I just want to know. <laughs> it's well, called style, Lucas. I think it's just style. Well, yeah, they, it, looked, they, it looked really they, shitty. It just looked Austin like Butler section. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, like, okay. oh, you mean like, yeah, the white section where like all the fans that are just was, a blur? That was interesting. I thought that looked cool as fuck, man. I think they like just infrared. wanted I think they just wanted a different look for that kind of zone. Probably because it looked like shit and they're like, hey, if we just make it white, <laughs> they'll just think it's cool. <laughs> hey, listen, yeah. I've done that before and it fucking works. Yeah, it yeah, does it look cool. Work. Shout out Voodoo Doll. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I, Aust Austin Butler, is he cool? I thought he was creepy. I could hear his Pretty Elvis cool. accent creeping over the Stellan Skarsgård <laughs> mimic, like occasionally it would slip out. I like how even when shit wasn't going well for his side, he was looking at, like he was getting turned on by yeah, it. Yeah, I like know? that too. That's good stuff. Yeah, he was good. I thought he was good. And what did they say? They're like humiliation and desire, desire are the levers by which we can control him. <laughs> 
Yeah, I thought but that was all like pointless because he just got killed at the end. So why show us any of that subplot just to like pad the runtime, make it like more torturous for the rest of us? Well, it's it's <laughs> a way of making that the kind of political give Lucas the worm bucket. He needs the sweet release. Uh, make sure there's some worm bucket, uh, back. Worm butter bucket on there. Worm bucket in back. <laughs> stroke, in. stroke the rim. So uh, and smooth. See, there's what you have to do is you have to make that sort of political maneuvering exciting in some way right, so right you know george rr R. martin obviously very influenced by this with game of thrones right. you have a character who can see the future you have all this political like maneuvering right. to get to the throne all this and game of thrones does it with prostitutes and dragons and, and this does it with knife fighting right and big worms that's true I really wanted to see how they dismounted from the worms. That's a great question. You know? Like Chalamet's riding the worm. This is the, the worm. The initial worm ride is a salad dragon for sure. Double dragon. It's thrilling. It's thrilling. And I, every time he approached like a big, like sand dude, I thought he was going to like, unhook and like flip off real cool <laughs> but, but they yeah. never show you how they dismount which I is know. a cheat they just cut to them like like washing their hands like yep we just jumped right off when it went back under i guess it's that easy release the dismount like, we're cut. a bunch of fucking idiots I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and were they, were they kind of driving them or did um, they just know they were heading a certain direction <laughs> I think I think a worm's gonna head where it's gonna head, right? Yeah, but kind of. And yeah, know, and you're kind of because... like the worm could go under at any time and just kill everyone. That's like, what. I, that's it, why. I was in like, the oh. books, do they talk about steering it? Okay, so yeah. I think this demonstrates that a little better actually than the book because you see the hooks go in, right? Right. And they pull a flap open <laughs> that's like opening a gill. Yeah, yeah. So the worm can't go under the sand because oh. it's where it gets its air is open. Oh, so that's okay. how they're keeping them okay. up. So I'm wondering okay. if you close one on one side, it's it leans that well, way. Well, yeah, because they're like, we're all heading to the south. So that they they all must have been driving them because yeah. all those worms wouldn't be going together. Yeah, and they were like in a nice line of worms and yeah. south. <laughs> yeah. yeah, straight lines. What I did like about it, and I actually really liked a lot about it, like I do like that it is a vibe. And, yeah. and that's what I struggled with at first, sort of with the with the first movie, but it, it was like more like a sort of an, it was like very much about, it was very nature. Yeah. Like, it feels like there was a lot of nature and like just like chilling out. So I was totally prepared for that with yeah. this. And I like how when, pa when Paul's having visions, it kind of like dissolves to like red and blue and then in and out of whatever he's looking at, then back to the colors, then back to him. Like it's, it's nice. It's like, yeah, they repeat it like three or four times. So if you miss <laughs> it, you get like five more chances to see the interlude again. I loved it every time. And it was, it's old fashioned kind of, you know, mm -hmm. there's, there's not, there's nothing too razzle dazzle about that, but it's effective. I think. Another thing I really liked was um, sort of how his mother oh, yeah. sort of almost got like she almost became an antagonist in a weird way. You were like, is she evil? <laughs> like she was for him, but she was also sort of like, you know, I don't know. That was really cool to me. Yeah. I like how creepy she was. Like he's kind of nonchalant his, about it. He's like, yeah. oh, mom. I like how creepy his the <laughs> unborn lies. child was. Mm -hmm. Like It's like his mom's like spreading shit on Facebook and he's like, ah, she's doing that again. Yeah. <laughs> she should stop that. That part of it I really like. I really like those dynamics. Yeah, I like how <laughs> that montage of elderly eyes of past regent mothers. <laughs> I really like that. <laughs> Seeing that huge. Just like seeing Christopher Walken's face fill up the entire <laughs> IMAX screen. I love it. I, I love that shit. I wish we could have seen holdovers in IMAX so we could get a full screen to your body. <laughs> like his lazy eye is the size of all of us combined. That would be great. They need um, to work that into the the bucket somehow. <laughs> oh, Giamatti's God, lazy <laughs> eye. A holdovers bucket. Uh, I felt like, again, I didn't know what act we were in or whatever. I was just kind of hanging out in the desert through most of it. And the the pace felt right until they headed down south. And then I felt like shit got real fast, like they were cramming a bunch of shit. Kind of how I felt in the Lynch version. But that, like, when he meets Chani, shit just speeds the fuck up. Like, 
crazily. Okay. But this one, I just felt the the editing pace felt a little choppy to me. Like suddenly he was in the room with the little worms. And I'm just like, whoa, 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 whoa. And then suddenly Chani was there with him. I'm like, shit was moving really fast for me. But maybe that's just because everything before that was so deliberate. Um, it took it too, a little long for the final battle to finally get going. Like, right. Yeah. But I could have just hung out in the desert the whole time. Like all that stuff was my favorite part of it. Like the, yeah. once you get out of the desert and into like goth. <laughs> goth zones. Gladiator <laughs> zones. Like <laughs> then I wasn't as into it. But yeah. 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 I'm into it, man. I think, you know, knowing what had to be cut for time. Right. Is a little bit of a bummer. But really, you know, any good adaptation makes big changes. I right. think because a novel and films are drastically different right. mediums. So was there anything from the books that you really wish we could have seen today? Well, what I was looking forward to is his sister Aaliyah being a little kid Me with too. like a thousand generations of wisdom. Right. But what we got instead was <laughs> a sentient fetus who was communicating with her mother, <laughs> who was then passing that on to her brother. Yeah. Which is pretty fucking hilarious. It was kind of really. like Herman's head, but Herman's fetus. <laughs> yeah, man. Herman's fetus, <laughs> but you know that millions of people are watching this and just like, yeah. Yeah, there was a, fetus is talking. There was see? a there was a guy in the back row that was like, I'm not really into this sister fetus subplot, and the whole audience <laughs> yeah, shushed him. They're like, what? <laughs> And he never spoke again for the next two hours and 40 minutes. What was up with that guy? <laughs> that guy was opinionated. He was letting it fly. <laughs> but I will give Denis Villeneuve a point for taking a risk with the fetus cam. You know, clearly he was bowled over by Blonde blonde or whatever and was like, I need that in my movie. Yeah. And then we see Anya Taylor-Joy. Uh, flashes fla of Anya. Flashes of Anya. Which I guess will be a huge part of the third Dude, one. Messiah. I just want to say, <laughs> fucking, it looks so good. Yeah. Like, it really goes to show you when you put a lot of time and attention into visuals like that, and you're and just not head. shooting everything on a fucking green screen and just yeah. being like, we'll worry about this later. There'll be aliens flying around and the camera <laughs> will be moving 600 miles an hour. And this is very deliberate. All the effects shots are grounded. Yeah. The camera's moving like a camera would move. That's right. Not any faster. And it fucking pays off, man. Like, I'm really happy that movies like this make a lot of money because it would be so easy to dismiss this as like sci fi original miniseries right. fodder. You right. know what I mean? Like, this is for dorks. We're not going to get, <laughs> we're not going to put asses in seats with this. Yeah. The dorks showed up. <laughs> Did they ever? Well, I, I mean, it was mostly for the buckets, but right, still. Right. <laughs> it, it was packed. Yeah, yeah. I think so, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, the one thing I would say that I did want was like, I felt like, you know, the, the sort of the relationship arc in this film with Zendaya and our boy. Yeah. It is was it was a little it could have been better because I feel like I don't know how it was in the book Justin but it was like it was like she got mad at him for saying he was the prophet <laughs> yeah yeah and so they were at odds when pretty he, much every scene ends with her looking kind of uh, suspicious right and him. so and so they were going into this final bit where he like has the knife fight and he sort of like makes the declaration that he's like and I will marry the uh, empress and so he, he like disses her essentially yeah. but like it didn't really hit as hard because they were already at odds. Right. right. So I'm like, why weren't they like lovey dovey? And then that That's would feel like a total blow. Yeah. yeah. You, you know, know what, you know what I think happened? I think not that everything was misogynistic, you know, pre 2015, but you know, a book from 1965, <laughs> a lot of the women characters are defined by being, mothers and wives right you know so chani in the book who is described as often having elven features mm. so when i saw this casting i was like fucking nailed it <laughs> look at those elven features uh she's a strong character because she's you know one of the fremen she can fight she can survive but i think to make this 2024 compliant they wanted her to have a little more 
push back and right. just not be resigned to her fate, you know, as a as a wife or a partner. Right. They wanted her to be more independent. And I guess it makes it a little more interesting that she's not just going along. Like, then everybody would be going along with but it. But I'm, I, that's not my issue. Right. My issue is they could have had a reconcile moment, a right. reconcile love situation where they're just, where she's just like, you never should not. And he's like, I know. And they're like, mwah, 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 and they love and they kiss and they make <laughs> yeah. out. And then we go into the final thing and he's like, right. no F you, I'm going with this empress. Yeah. Good, and that would have been way better. Yeah. 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 When you have a character that can see the future, that character always fucking sucks. Right. Because they're just sitting there Brand with the a broken. thousand yard stare. <laughs> Brand, I being know. Being like, I, I know what has to happen. It's not cool, but you guys don't understand. I understand. What I, anyway. What I want to know, and Lucas, maybe you can help me out on this one. <laughs> they say never give up your water. Never give your up your fluid, fluid. Oh, for anything. Some good fluid stuff. Yeah, break so that law. When they're having what I assume to be tent sex... Oh, yeah. What's going on with the fluids? Are they, they like, ret retaining <laughs> yes, everything? Yes, they have to. They have to retain. Fremen women swallow is what you're saying. Oh, <laughs> uh, maybe, Justin. Do they, like... The, the, someone take this bucket from me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Millie gets the bucket now. This is, this is briefly touched upon in Dune Part 1, but the still tents retain a lot of moisture. Okay. Oh. Their systems oh, are okay. Oh, okay. All right. God, I got All right. You. Okay. Well, in that case, let's go to those dude to bones. I can feel it in the bones. Who's going to ride that worm first? I'm saving the grandmother worm until <laughs> a little bit later. Let's go with Brother Bishki. 70 millimeter worm. You are first to bone. First to bone. Yeah, it's been about a week since I saw this, uh, so I'm not coming fresh out of Iraqis. So, but uh, <laughs> Iraqis, but uh, that's not an accident. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I uh, I had a better time at this one than the first one. Okay. I, I thought the first one was kind of all set up, exposition. I don't think the dialogue's great in these movies, um, but the visual's what I'm there for. Well, Denis Villeneuve has come out and said he hates dialogue. Yeah. He wishes he ah. didn't have to have Which, it. Which, because he's not very good at it, and <laughs> but but the visuals, he's excellent at, and the, all the stuff in the desert, I mean, I don't want to recommend you go see this again in the IMAX 70 millimeter, mm. but the 70 millimeter just looked phenomenal, and the sandworm ride and just everything <laughs> with it like just and, and it had more of the spice which i yes. needed which i needed because i needed to get into the kind of the psychedelic stuff and, you needed the spice yes yeah, and and the first one didn't have as much of that so so this one it gets a full three bones from three me. bones from nice. Bishki. it's up a full bone a full from the last bone, one. yeah from the last one three worm bones Watch Mr. Smilster, what are you doing? Now, when I watch a film, I am looking for a few things. And what I'm normally looking for is the characters, the emotionality. Mm. But I will say with Dune, I I don't really need that. You know what I mean? I enjoy the vibe. I enjoy the blowing sand. I yeah. enjoy the blowing garments. I like that <laughs> that all those ladies like have that voice that is so creepy and they can just control gentlemen. I'm yeah. into it, you know? I mean, so Dune for me is like, I mean, I do have some problems, like, and again, with just like, I feel like there could be deeper character stuff going on. But at the end of the day, I don't really care. Right. So, because I do think it is just beautiful. And I love the Harkonnen gross stuff. I love that goth stuff. I love all of that. So I'm giving it three. Three bones from Lodge Mistress. Brother Justin, can you go higher? The Lodge extends life. The Lodge <laughs> expands consciousness. <laughs> you know what? I don't know if I will go any higher oh, because shit. one thing that I'm a sucker for is good old fashioned fun at the cinema. There you go. And sometimes even if something has a sheen of prestige to it, sometimes it's just not as fun as I want it to be. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's fair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And... For me, you need a John Leguizamo <clears throat> in this cutting up and cracking wise. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I mean, come on. But, you know, I, I think the, the shadow of Lynch's Dune looms large <laughs> over this, even though I'm not a really big David Lynch fan. 
he got super weird with it. Yeah, that and movie's so, so special. If you're going to be more restrained, that kind of hurts you a little bit. Like in the Lynch version, they show guild navigators, which are the people who pilot the spaceships, and they do a ton of spice so much so that it warps them yeah and they become like mutated and creepy and they float in these tanks of spice and you're not gonna show me any of that <laughs> shit <laughs> that's super weird like the whole conflict revolves around spice production and the only thing you're really seeing of what spice does is it makes your eyes blue. Right. right more right. or less. Sometimes. And he's ha he has some nightmares and she's like, you've been in the spice for a while. It'll yeah, but man, make like. Dreams weird. There's a parable here. There's a resource that allows people to travel in the desert. That's what sci fi does well. It takes a real world conflict. Right adds fucking aliens and makes you think about real world politics in a fun way. And this doesn't even go into that at all. That's really bizarre. So when he threatens to halt spice production, you should really know what the fuck that means. Right. That means no one can travel between planets. Right. I didn't get that. Yeah, I missed yeah that. that's mm. a I fucking mean, I, swing yeah. and a miss. <clears throat> that said, God damn, the effects are so good. The acting's good. Acting um, is good. You know, I was pretty with it most of the time. And uh, it's like I said, it just feels like an uncontested layup. It's like, I want to <laughs> see you dunk over your peers who are also at this level. Right. And we're just not getting that. It's just so much more well thought out than anything out there. But I'm also going to go three bones. Three bones from Brother Justin. All right. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. I set down a thumper to summon <laughs> the LT <laughs> Mega Worm. Oh, shit. Here he comes. Oh, no. Take a drink every time there's a thumper on screen. I mean, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Like, does it lose its effect after a while? And then they try to end the movie on that beat, and I'm, like, falling asleep. <laughs> but before I begin, I'd like to just uh, read uh -oh. something. Oh, yeah. He's had something in his so, pocket. Oh, yeah. Today, as I was walking out of the house, I was like, let me check the mail. And I had one letter, and it was from my retired father in Florida oh shit who sent me literally one newspaper clipping which is his version of like links you know because he doesn't have you. a computer yeah, yeah, thank yeah. You. but it was so crazy it was uh the Wall Street Journal dated Friday March 1st arts and review with a headline a spectacular return to Arrakis and I'm not gonna read the whole thing but I'm just gonna read you what he underlined because I guess he knows I'm busy so I might not be able to read everything so he just underlined Denis Villeneuve continues to tell them he is one of the most mesmerizing visual artists in cinema. Greg Frazier's photography and Hans Zimmer's score are full of majesty. Moreover, Mr. Chalamet and Zendaya lack the gravitas to pass for mythic heroes. Such is Mr. Villeneuve's visual craftsmanship, however, that part two is plenty fulfilling as a sensory experience. If Stanley Kubrick were alive and agreed to create a contemporary blockbuster, he might have made something like this, though crucially, he would have imbued it with much more thematic freight. That's pretty much it. Um, mm. But yeah, for me, <clears throat> it just fell flat. Like it just felt like I'd seen this in part one. Part two, with the exception of Austin Butler, really shows me like no new images or no information. It all felt like redundant emotional beats repeated over and over and over again. And like, we got it. Like, I totally get it. Can we please move on <laughs> to the action? Ooh. And I felt kind of like misled because everyone was like, oh, part two is going to be all action. And it's like literally two hours and like 15 minutes of no action. And then like, yeah, the last hour they are uh, like 45 minutes. They, I guess, fight question mark, but not really. <laughs> like it just feels all uneven. And yeah, the editing felt like it was just one big montage where shit just happened. And it's funny because like if you over explain something, if it's too convoluted, you get lost, you're confused. But then again, yeah, if you don't explain anything, like you're lost and you're confused. So I was kind of like, damn, why is this so bad? Like, it, yeah, like, wasn't Frank Herbert's like novels like a good source material to draw from? And then you see at the end that, oh, Denis is like adapting this. He's got a co-writing credit with John Spates who wrote Passengers with Chris Pratt and Jennifer Lo uh, Lawrence. Lawrence. Yeah. So it's like 
can you not get better writers just to make this cohesive and like actually have peaks and valleys or like setups and payoffs or like tension or drama? Cause it's just, it's all shit I've seen in the last movie. Where are you going with this? I mean, I guess you can't woof this. <laughs> no, good God. No. I mean, yeah, it does look pretty. And yeah, the sound subwoofers were like doing great. Oh yeah. But there you go. this was pretty uninspired. So I gotta give it two bones. Two bones. Oh, not that bad. Utah. Give me two. Not too bad. Uh I love it. I mean, I love everything that's going on. It is a whole vibe. You can just watch it on mute if you want. And uh <laughs> <clears throat> I don't know, man. I, I won't I won't belabor it, but I say three bones. But I'm going to Brother Ben a Jesuit bump this up to three and a half. It's a Brother Ben bump, y'all. And I'm ready for part three. I'm less, ready for all of this. Less than the first one, though, at four. Listen, I, I hadn't seen anything like it. You okay. know, this is just an extension of that movie yeah. for me. You okay. know, that's why I'm excited for it to conclude so I can have a frame of reference to know where I am and stitch it all together and, you know jump on and off the worm as I want as I watch all three of them you know like that's gonna be good but three and a half and I I'm just glad that you know there's a full ass theater watching something like this you know yeah, like it's, it's making cool. money it's making money because there's nothing else to see guys we're done <laughs> we're so fucking done you don't even know how yeah. done we are we got Kung Fu Panda 4 yeah, we got right? lots of stuff coming up. right <laughs> <laughs> they won't even release Roadhouse in theaters. That is a crime. But they, but they advertise it outside the theater, which is like pissing in our faces. <laughs> it's a crime on Prime. It's prime crime. <laughs> All right, Brother Justin, thank you for lending your Dune experience to Long this cast. Long live the Lodge. And uh, Lodge Mistress, thanks for huffing spice oh, with us tonight. Let the sands blow. I enjoyed it. <laughs> That's Dune. And thank you again, Brother Scott, for bequeathing this bucket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who gets to take it home oh, tonight? Oh, boy. Yeah. We'll find out. <laughs> we'll have a knife battle for it. Lisa <laughs> Al-Qaib. It's magic, y'all. It's magic. It's magic. That's magic. Love and light, y'all. Love, Love and light. light. Young woman, share your fire with me My heart is cold, my soul is free I am a stranger in your land A wandering man, call me Sam At night when the stars light up the sky Oh, sir, I dream my fire is high Oh, taste these lips, sir, if you can Wandering man, I'll call thee sand I'm into worms. <laughs>